Okay, so you went through, hopefully, and you, and you completed the informational packet, and it, uh, you need to complete it so you understand everything that's going on here. Uh, if you don't understand what's going on in that informational packet as far as dihybrid and monohybrid crosses and what exactly is going on with the genes and where they are on chromosomes, then it's going to be hard for you to apply it here in this project. So this is the second half of your project. This is your lab, your take-home lab for the break. It's dragon. Next, you're going to make a dragon. Uh, here, look here, worksheet one has you trying to figure out what letters are used to represent eye color. It's kind of very similar to stuff you did in the informational packet, just kind of orienting you on what's going on. You have long tail, short tail, anyway, so you know the res dominant recessives. Uh, this, again, is pretty keyed up to dominant recessives uh, traits. We're not really having any... Uh, uh, any kind of oddball stuff going on other than some sex-linked traits here. As you can see, that no ear frills is uh, is on uh, X chromosome, while the Y chromosome carries ear frills. Uh, so if you have a male, you're going to have ear frills. If you have a female, no ear frills, right? And so something to think about. Uh, and here you see, you know, I'm not going to, you can go ahead and fill these answers in. And it's all off of this key. This is testing to see if you, these questions are testing to see if you understand this key. All right, so here in worksheet two has you looking at kind of developing uh, your genotype. Uh, so here, so here you're making your parent and what you want to do, this is the, the parent of your cross. You're going to want to fill in the information as you see your 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 dragon your dragon's going to make babies with some other dragon uh, from someone in your class so you're going to take your phenotype and make your phenotype whatever that phenotype may be you know having frills or does it have a long neck or short neck does it have you know what color eyes does it have does it have horns or not does it have spikes or not decide if yours you want yours to be homozygous or heterozygous for each of these okay and then decide what your genotype is. So start from phenotype and move back up to heterozygous or homozygous. And you're going to have to, um, you know, if your eye, if your neck length is homozygous, then it's going to have to be homozygous. If your neck length is dominant, then you could have a heterozygous or homozygous dominant, right? So if your phenotype is recessive, it has to be homozygous. If your phenotype is dominant, it could be either heterozygous or homozygous. That You can make your choice there. And then you put that genotype in. Where would you get that genotype? You would get it from table the table on page one. So go back to that table that you just looked at, that you answered those questions about, and fill out the genotype for the neck length and the eye color and the horn and the spikes. And then do the same for genotype. Uh, do the same for tail length, body color, color of wings, number of toes, belly color, color spikes, freckles, and fire breathing or ear frills. And... So you do your phenotype, and then you fill in your, your whether it's homozygous and genotype and, or heterozygous. Again, that's going to depend on the phenotype. If your phenotype is homozygous recessive, then it, it is recessive, then it has to be homozygous recessive. And that's going to tell you your genotype here. So then once you're done with everything, then you can go ahead and write out your, your entire genome, right, your whole, your human genome, and you can do it in several ways, you know, you can do chromosome one, and then you can write out, you know, I'm going to make some letters up here, because I don't want to pull in the chart from the first page, and you can say, you know, big T, little t, uh, big A, little a, uh, big W, little w, z, z, and that could take care of your, uh, your first chromosome, and your second chromosome, you do the same, Decide what your home is, and where you're getting this information. You're getting it from your genotype. Where'd you get your genotype? Where you decide if it was homozygous or heterozygous, and what that depended on your phenotype, and that means what you want your dragon to look like. So, do you want your dragon to have a short neck or long neck, eye color, horn, spikes, etc.? And you would do this for all four chromosomes, right? All four chromosomes would have. This you'd have this decision made for all four chromosomes, uh, one, two, three, and four, and you'd have all the genotypes for each of these. 
that you would get off here from the table on page one. Okay. So what's next? You go and uh, you go and cut out your phenotypes that you like. Again, your choice of phenotype is going to determine your genotype. Um, you know, in some of these, uh, in this type of lab, you can ask for some kind of randomization, but go ahead and choose what your dragon, what you want your dragon to look like, and color it in, et cetera. You go and put your pet dragon here. So you, you choose whether you want it to have fire breathing and spikes and color or whatever. Then you're going to make your, uh, you know, your, your baby. And when you're going to make your baby, the first part, of course, is to make your egg or your sperm. So what does that mean? That means you're going to have to flip a coin. You have to take a, a, a coin. And you're going to have to choose, you know, heads or tails. And it's either going to be heads or tails. I mean, one or two. Which allele are you going to have? Are you, let me go ahead and make sure you understand this. It could be that you have, when you have two possibilities for each of these, right? So you have two possibilities. The neck length could be long or short, right? So if it's long, so if you have, if you have homozygous, you said you had homozygous, let's say you have heterozygous neck length, so you either have, you're either going to have big L or you're going to have, uh, you're going to have big L or you're going to have, uh, little L, right? Eye color, and say it's blue or brown, you can choose either brown eye, or you can have uh, you can have blue eyes. But that depends on that depends on what kind of genotype you had, which then again depends on on what you chose as a phenotype and how that particular trait comes, you know. Uh, so when you that chart that you filled up earlier that you, that you used to create your dragon, that's going that limits your choices at each of these, right? So if you have a, a recessive trait, you have a short neck. Let's say I I, I don't remember which one's dominant or recessive, but let's say you have a short neck. Uh, so that means that you're you if you have a short neck then you can only give the little l if your eye color is recessive and you only have a little e then that's all you can give there and if your horn is a little h because you don't have horns and that's how it comes or you or you have a horn and it's, i don't know remember horns are dominant recessive I and mean, spikes let's say is dominant you do have spikes and yours is you just decided it was heterozygote, then you have to flip a coin to whether you get big S or little s in this on this chromosome. Because you're only giving one of these chromosomes to your to your zygote, right? You're only giving one chromosome each because remember me after meiosis two, your sperm are either gonna have uh, are gonna have chromosome only one of each of these, right? So that's really key. And now you're gonna have to find a partner in your class and either email them or I'll call them if you have a friend in class or in school. Anybody in ninth grade will do. Uh, that you can uh, share your, your, your genes with. So if you had, let's say, little L, uh, little E, uh, big H, and little S. And you had uh, here your tail length. You have uh, uh, tail length, let's say, big T, uh, body color brown. So big B, I don't know. I don't know what the colors, the letters are. You have to look at the, at the chart. But uh, color of wings, red. Uh, toe number three, belly color, blue. Spike color, yellow, and freckles. I don't know. And fire breathing, uh, uh, fire for. Big, uh, little F for fire breathing because it's recessive. I don't know. I'm not sure what the actual symbols are, but let's go ahead and say a little F for fire breathing. And ear frills, let's say, has ear frills. So I think ear frills is on the X on the Y chromosome, but whatever. So they have fire breathing and ear frills. So 
these are the genes that you randomly have chosen based on flipping a coin if necessary. It's not necessary if you have a, uh, you know, if you have a recessive gene, uh, recessive trait, because there's only one choice for recessive. But if you have a heterozygote, then you have to flip a coin. So these are your genes. Now you have someone else that's done this is going to have to tell you their genes, and then that's going to lead you to your next step. That's this. And so you go ahead and fill in the genotype because your half is coming off that chart you just saw. Chromosome 1 is going to give your half, and let's say it's, um, let's say you gave neck length was short, uh, so you gave little L, but your partner had a big L. So then your genotype would be, uh, the genotype of your, of, your, of your baby would be big L, little L. And uh, your, is it, what is it? It's heterozygous. It would be, it would be heterozygous, right? Because it would be heterozygous because uh, there's two different alleles here. Uh, both, are, you know, your chromosome one that you made that only gave you that that gave you this big L. The chromosome one that your partner gave that gave you the little L. So that gives you heterozygous. And what's your phenotype? Well, it's whatever the in this case is your big L. Your big L is your is your dominant. So it's you know it's going to be long neck, right? So even though you had a short neck, right? You chose that sh short neck. Yours was heterozygous. Or yours was yours was uh, homozygous, so you only could give it a small L. But your partner, he had a long neck, and he happened to have given you a big L when he made his eggs or sperm or whatever it was that his that partner gave you. So, and the same thing you would you would go ahead and do the same thing here with eye color. If your eye, if your eye color was you know little E and your partner also happened to have a little E, then you have a homozygous, right? And it's recessive. It happens in homozygous recessive. And, you know, this is blue. Blue eyes, right? Again, I don't remember what the eye colors were, but you can look at your chart and, and figure that out. And you would just do that for all of them, and you what you'll do once you're done with you and your partner is you'll have all this whole chart filled out on whether you what your what your baby looks like. So, what is the genotype of this of this zygote? What's the is it homozygous or heterozygous for each of these traits? And what's the phenotype for each of these traits? And you know what each chromosome is then for this particular uh, zygote. And your part you of course would do the same with your partner. You and your partner would either email or share each with each other your results. And what you would end up with is some kind of creature that has this genotype, therefore is heterozygous, homozygous, whatever, and it gives you these phenotypes, which then leads you to building the dragon using, again, these particular features, these traits, and you would paste it here. So you have, at the end of this activity, you will have had the genotype and phenotype of your particular pet dragon, You'd have all your pet dragon colored and all the different traits that it would have pasted on one sheet. Then you would create egg or sperm and you would call your partner and you, they would give you their gametes information. You'd create that gamete if you have a heterozygous by flipping a coin. And if you have homozygous, you only have one choice. And you would then, after you share that information with the other gamete, whoever that partner is, You'd fill in that table uh, that would allow you to, to, to make, to choose the traits that would make your baby dragon. And your baby dragon would fill in this page. And so when you come in on Monday after break, you'll have eat your pet dragon already done and your baby dragon. How will I grade you? Well, you're going to be limited in, the in a number of possibilities based on your cho original choices from your parent pet dragons. And your partner, if you can't find a partner, if you, if for some reason, uh, you don't know any, you don't feel comfortable emailing anyone, or you don't want to work with anyone, 
you can make up, you can just do this twice. Do it twice. You do it first with uh, your own, your pet dragon, and then do another pet dragon, a different uh, set. And so you just do this whole process twice on your own. But I would suggest you find a partner. It'll be more fun. All right. Good luck. Bye.